Hello and welcome to another out of spec detailing video here from Clear Detailing in Northern Colorado. Next to me here, we have a freshly detailed Mercedes Benz. And I just spent the last couple of days doing paint corrections, ceramic coatings, the wheels off coatings, the whole nine yards. But what really struck me about this car was the PPF. Now this car has had PPF on it for about six months and 3,500 miles. And I really wanted to bring you guys along with me and show you what actually six months of paint protection film looks like in the real world. Is it good or is it bad? Well, let's jump into it. If you guys are new to this channel, I have been a professional detailer for the better part of the last 10 years, really specializing in high-end paint corrections, really intricate detailing, and definitely ceramic coatings. Throughout that 10-year journey, I really loved the idea of paint protection film, so much so that I actually flew down to San Antonio, went through the whole Expel paint protection film training course, in aims to protect my customers' vehicles and offer it as a service. Went down there, went through the whole training course, got back here, started installing some PPF on customers' vehicles, and I went, I don't think this stuff really met my expectations. There's a lot of issues I have with PPF. And I'll be honest with you, since then I have completely stopped offering it as a service. I don't really believe in the product. I do think there are definitely certain use cases where paint protection film makes a ton of sense. But I really want to bring you guys along and show you what six months, just six months of ownership of paint protection film actually looks like. Now, I believe this film to be a high-end film, something like Expel. I do not know who installed this film. We'll talk a lot about that later on in the video. Let's jump in here a little bit closer and let me show you some issues and things that I've seen in my 10 years of detailing that I really don't love about PPF. Now let's just pretend for a second that you went to one of the top paint protection film installers out there. You spent thousands and thousands of dollars. For example, let's just say maybe you spent on this $2,000 to have a partial front end done. You know, the front bumper here mirrors all of the door handles and a few extra little bits here and there. The issue is not necessarily always with the installer. We'll get into that later on because spoiler alert, this PPF installer should not be installing PPF anymore. But for example, you go to the best PPF installer. What does the film actually look like after six months? Well, one of the biggest issues that I talk about with paint protection film is actually bug stains. And you may be thinking like, okay, that's kind of a weird thing to think about, but it is very, very prominent on film. Let me explain a little background why. So normal paint, like this vehicle has PPF here. So just partial and not back here. Paint is a lot harder material than something like the paint protection film. PPF is also very, very porous. It's actually quite flexible. You can stretch this stuff. You have to when you're wrapping bumpers and stuff like this and curved objects. It needs to be a material that you can stretch because it's essentially a flat plane and you're molding it to the vehicle. Now, this has been one of the biggest issues I've seen with PPF. And I'll explain a little bit about a car that I actually detailed for a customer that was insistent on getting PPF. He took it to another shop, got a full hood done, full fenders, full front bumper, mirrors, all that stuff. Paid like $2,500 to get it installed. He then immediately brought it to me after the film was done. We did a paint correction on the rear end of the vehicle, ceramic coating all over the front of the vehicle. He took it on a couple thousand mile road trip over like two weeks time. This was a black Audi SUV. He brought it to me after the road trip and I went, what the hell did you do to this thing? The entire front end was just completely littered in bug stains. And I'm out here, you know, we've already coated this. So I'm like, okay, let's focus on the PPF. You know, we've got the whole hood to work with. 
let's start polishing. And as I get into it, I realize these are permanent in here because what actually happens with PPF, bugs hit it. If you didn't know, bugs are very, very acidic, very, very harsh on things like paint and plastic and things like that. And it had essentially baked onto the car and etched the clear bra. So if you think about clear bra like this, you get a bug stain on it and it's essentially creating craters like this. Although PPF is self-healing, which is really one of the reasons that I wanted to offer PPF, being that it has high scratch resistance that you can, you know, improperly wash it and the scratches will come back out with heat. I thought that was super cool, but bugs are a totally different issue. It literally eats away the paint. So this particular car for the same example, I just want you guys to know this is 3,500 miles in about six months with the PPF installed. I just finished up the detail on this. So we did paint correction back there, polished up the clear bra as best as I could because we have bug stains. This has already been coated as well. Now let me just show you the unfortunate reality of what PPF looks like and what bugs do to paint protection film. See this smudge right here? Well, that is etched clear bra with bug stains. Same down here, same right here. We can come to the hood. We have the same issue right here. You just start walking around this thing and realize, oh my gosh, I hope you guys can maybe see this you can really see how it's etched the bra there. This is just a tiny little bug. I don't know how long this sat on here, but it couldn't have been too long. That has completely ruined the PPF. This is permanently in here. Let's just look at this headlight here. Notice all of the little spots in here. Yep, that's all bug stains. Down here, more bug stains. So my thought process behind this is, okay, you just went and spent $2,000 in this particular case of doing PPF on here, or in my example with the Audi client of mine, he spent $2,500 to do the full front end on this Audi. He now has to go in and replace it. So he ended up having me rip the film off. We had new film installed on the hood, new film installed on the bumper at another shop, of course. It was about $2,000. He's $4,500 into PPF on his brand new Audi and he just had to replace it again. This is six months on this Mercedes. Like to me, the technology is just not there. Now you may say, oh, well, the biggest reason I want PPF, yeah, I can deal with some bug stains and things like that. I really get annoyed with rock chips. Great, I think PPF is a good way to do that. I think most people think that PPF is going to make your car look better. In this particular example, I actually find PPF to look a little bit worse. You see edges everywhere. You see edges peeling up, getting dirt under them. I really don't think it's a good way to think about PPF as an enhancement to your vehicle. I find it to be a sacrificial layer. And in that example, it was, you know, you have, a little to no rock chips on here, you tear the film off, put new stuff on. But as you can see, it gets incredibly expensive. So what do rock chips actually look like when they hit PPF? And uh, I think this will shock you because I don't think a lot of people talk about this. So on the hood here of this Mercedes, see this little speck right here? Well, that's where a rock impacted this, completely tore the film up, and now this is permanently in there. So again, you just spent money on this, this has been on here for six months and you have rock chips already. Now I understand you may say, oh, well, it's protecting the paint underneath. And while I would say 90% of the time it does, there are still things that get through. This, for example, has gone all the way through the clear bra into the paint and basically down to the uh, original primer coat or even the plastic maybe in this example. So the PPF did not do its job here. This is also an example of what you're gonna see this is more rock chipping. So in my professional opinion, I just don't quite understand the whole rationale of spending thousands and thousands of dollars when this is more prone to um, bug stains and you still get rock chips. Now, of course, yes, you are protecting it against rock chips. So we've seen that sometimes they do go through, but 
who really cares at the end of the day? Are you keeping this car for your entire lifetime and want it wrapped in a bubble? Well, if you do, just leave it in your garage and never drive it. Then it'll be perfectly fine. Or, you know, are you one of those people who is just throwing money around? I think that's really what it comes down to. And it's really, really frustrating. Now, lastly, I just wanna talk about installers. If you, if you watch this video or other videos and decide PPF is right for me, that's totally fine. I think PPF makes sense for a few use cases. You know, if you have a very, very special car or if you just got a car repainted and it means a lot to you, sure, throw PPF on it, leave it on there for a few years, replace it. The thing that frustrates me the most though with PPF is the installers. And I'll tell you, this is about 90% of the installers out there. There are guys who are absolute wizards with PPF, and this is not aimed at any of those guys, but there is some seriously shoddy work that I see out there. And like I said, 90% of the cars I see really look like this. So first off, well, let's come over here and look at how this paint protection film actually looks. Well, you'll notice on this fender here, we have contamination, contamination. Tell me how that looks better than a rock trip. Well, it doesn't. So here we have, I don't know why this is. In Colorado, nobody uses pre-cut kits. And we have a lot of guys actually hand cut on vehicles. So you'll follow this up here and then whoop, it goes down, totally missed that edge. Comes down here. Now this film's lifting over here. Tell me again how that looks better than rock chips. And then you come down here Let's see if the camera will focus and you go, uh, yeah, you totally missed the mark there. What I want you to look at is not only how poor the execution of cutting on this vehicle was, but all of those little wrinkles next to the film. All of this stuff over here is actually from um, glue line. So essentially they put this over, they had to pull it back up to um, release the film here and then put it back in. It just looks completely terrible. This up here is actually called a silvering mark. You can see it almost looks like a fingerprint and that's exactly what it is. Essentially what happens is when you're installing film, you have a slip solution under here, a kind of wet movement over the top of it, that same slip solution so you can move it around and you get this fingerprint and it permanently stains the glue there. Now, high-end PPF guys, this stuff doesn't happen. You can see all of this texturing in here. I don't know to you guys, but this looks pretty terrible. So it's just frustrating. Like this customer spent a lot of money. They wanted to protect their investment. They have bug stains here. Look at how poor this install is here. This is all glue lines around here. And then you come into areas like this. Um, I don't even know how to explain what's going on here. Let me open up the hood in this situation. So this PPF installer, hello, please focus has tried to install this edge. So they have a um, basically relief mark here, which is totally fine. But what they did is they took a little sliver of PPF and actually put it over the top of this. I see this kind of crap all of the time. Look at this right here. What is going on here? Like seriously, how is this something that leaves a shop? This to me, again, if you're gonna spend money on PPF, have the best guy do it. But just keep in mind, issues like bug staining and things like that will arise over time. You always will have edges lift over time as well. Now, the issues with edges lifting, I can show you exactly what I mean. So if you don't wrap all the way over this, now most high-end PPF guys will try to wrap every single edge. Sometimes it's not beneficial though. So for example, like this here, if you were to take this bumper over or off, try to wrap all of these edges, this bumper will move over time and you'll get a little bit of lifting here on the film. It can cause like an air pocket and things like that. So what a lot of guys do, we'll just bring it down here as close to possible as they humanly can. But the problem with that is now you have an exposed edge from this way, this will build up with a ton of dirt. I spent a ton of time cleaning all of these edges on here and uh, yeah, really doesn't look that great in my impression. You know, edges like this, this is not a very well done edge. We have um, <laughs> cutting marks on here that like, this guy really shouldn't be using a knife blade anywhere near this car. 
So totally missed the edge here. I hope you guys can see this. Comes down, gets really tight here. And I, whoop, totally missed that. Whoop, totally missed that. And it's like, okay. So that's my frustration with PPF. In my impression, if you want it on a special car, spend the money. You probably have the money. If you're buying a half a million dollar supercar, just spend the darn money on the thing. But if you have a normal daily driver, I think what's gonna happen over time is if you get it paint corrected, if you get it ceramic coated, you hand wash it, maintain it, your car will be highly, highly more valuable to somebody like a deal dealer or even another um, prospective buyer if your car is clean, if you spend money to have it properly detailed and coated and really maintain it. Yes, you may have a few rock chips, but you're not gonna be thousands of dollars into something that is so finicky and very temporary. So I hope this video kind of explained a few things here. And uh, I just wanna show you just some other weird areas like this. So this is all contamination here. Boom, 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 boom. And then we have a big old bug stain here. We have this edge lifting. So this is what happens when your edges actually lift. They hold dirt inside them and you'll notice, yeah, totally missed the entire edge there. So yeah, guys, I don't know about you, but PPF in my personal experience is really just not worth the hassle and more importantly, not worth the money unless you have a special car and all the money to throw at it and burn essentially. So thanks so much for watching. I know there's gonna be some interesting comments down below. I'm happy to answer any questions you may have, but really my recommendation is paint correct your car, ceramic coat it, keep it cleaned properly. Thanks so much for joining us on another out of spec detailing video. We'll see you in the next one soon. Bye-bye.